We're going to review some basic biochemistry processes today, and we'll start with glycolysis, including the Cori cycle, move from there to the Krebs cycle, including the Peruvate dehydrogenase complex, then the electron transport chain, including the shuttles, glycogen, both making and breaking it, so glycogenesis, as well as glycogenolysis. Finally, we'll do gluconeogenesis. We'll probably break them up into a two or three different videos, but let's talk about how they all fit together first. So we started out with a molecule of glucose. That's the traditional place to start, just kind of the traditional carbohydrate to start with. We took that to pyruvate. That was our glycolysis story. One of the things that you have to know about every single process that we do is what's the point of the process? Likely, nobody will directly ask you what's the point. More likely, they'll give you a story. You ate this, you didn't eat that, you're doing something, you're not doing something. Here's a list of processes. Which ones are happening? Which ones are not happening? So we went from there, and we'll, we'll talk more about that. We went from there and took pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. That was our pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. So in glycolysis, we started processing carbohydrates with the end goal of making energy in mind, got to pyruvate. Now we've got to do something we want to make that energy. We do energy making processes most of the time in the mitochondria. Don't forget our most of the time rule. Most of the time the mitochondria is about energy making processes. Most of the time the cytoplasm is about storage. Of course glycolysis is the exception. Glycolysis is an energy making process in the cytoplasm. You need one of those because there's parts of you that don't have mitochondria. The most common example you're going to hear with that is your red blood cells. So your red blood cells need to make energy too, just like all the other parts of you, but they don't have mitochondria, so glycolysis is how they do it. So the pyruvate crosses into the mitochondria. We do the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex get ourselves a molecule of acetyl-CoA. Then we do the Krebs cycle. Don't forget, also known as the citric acid cycle, also known as the tricarboxylic acid cycle. So this is where we process not only carbohydrates, you remember that, but also fats and also proteins. When we first did this, we hadn't talked about fats and proteins yet. So it's really easy to have carbs on the brain, literally, with the Krebs cycle and forget the fats and proteins part. But what we do is we make the stuff that makes you ATP. So we don't actually make ATP in the Krebs cycle. We make the stuff that makes ATP, as in we make ATP equivalents. We write checks for ATP. Well, a check is not spendable money. You need to be able to cash the check to get spendable money. You need to be able to convert your ATP equivalents or your reducing equivalents, another term for the same thing, to spendable ATP. So what we do is we send them to the electron transport chain, and that's where we finally get the ATP out of, out of the ATP equivalents. So that's our story. Glycolysis, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. So let's talk about how some of the other topics that we're going to talk about fit in. Well, glycolysis really and truly is an anaerobic process. That means I don't need oxygen to get from point A to point B. Point A and point B being glucose to pyruvate. However, once I get to pyruvate, if I want to continue to all these energy making steps, I can only do that if I have a sufficient amount of oxygen. 
be careful. In a lot of our notes, we write no oxygen because we have no space to write insufficient. So, or sufficient. So if I have enough oxygen, I'll go to acetyl-CoA, go through all my steps and make ATP. However, if I don't, I have this kind of do-over loop called the Cori cycle. I'm going to do that if I have insufficient oxygen. And again, we write no oxygen and we really shouldn't. Um, it's insufficient oxygen. So what we do there is we go through the steps that we'll talk about and we get back to glucose, send it back out into the bloodstream and try this again. So it's kind of a do-over loop, like we said, that we use if we don't have enough oxygen. Then the final process that we're going to look at is gluconeogenesis. So gluconeogenesis. Break the word down. Gluco, glucose, neo, new, genesis generating. It's a way I can make glucose out of non-carbohydrate sources. It's a way I can make glucose if I don't happen to be eating enough glucose. Pretty rare that that's the case. We eat way too much glucose typically, but it, it is a way of making glucose. So that's how our, all of our processes, these five that we're talking about fit together. So let's look at glycolysis first.